Okay, hello, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm not going to be discussing a lot of books. I'm going to be discussing some books, but I'm not going to show you what I read this today. It is actually, I have exciting news, and I'm excited for it, and I'm just gonna go through the haul and stuff like that. So, okay. I recently, my sister gifted me this lovely, lovely Lilo and Stitch Funko, and I've wanted her for such a long time. I'm just so happy that she's finally here, and she's she is so heavy. She is massively, she's so massive. Um, it's massive is not the right word. S solid? I don't know. I know the word in Dutch, but I don't know the word in English. But she's very, very heavy. She's definitely something you could throw at someone and have like the person could de would definitely have a massive head bump. I'm sure. But she, I'm not gonna throw her because she's too lovely. And Lilo and Stitch is one of my favorite. It is my third favourite Disney movie, if I have to make a top three, it's Mulan, Beauty and the Beast. <coughs> <coughs> Sexy. Um, and then Lilo and Stitch. And oh, I'm just so happy to have it in my hands and I'm just, oh, I'm so happy. Okay, so then I'm going to continue with the Behind the Pages haul because I ordered more because I have no, no self-control. But these were all discontinued and on sale, so that's why I got them. Um, so, first off, I got Kai from the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. He is supposed to smell like amber, white tea, and oriental myrrh. Mir? Mir? I don't know. He smells very, very lovely. He smells very, very manly. But, like, I don't, what, what do I know? How do, I don't know what a man smells like, but anyway, um... He smells, um, he smells kind of like, he, he smells very nice. Then we have Adam from the Raven Cycle series by Maggie Stiefvater, who is supposed to smell like summer and cheap shampoo. And he smells like chemical cherry, so I suppose the cheap shampoo does ring true, that part. But he smells very nice, but like chemical cherry. Then we have Cashin from Satin Musk who smells like satin musk and peppercorn and is from the Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. Um, yeah, I can't really smell this one because, I don't know, he just, it's, it's, it's kind of nice. It's, it's okay. It's, it's not very, it's not very, um, it doesn't really stand out, but it's a nice scent, I suppose. And then we have Warden from the, um, Warden from the Prime Season series. That's not that's not the title for it, but um, by Samantha Shannon, and he smells like lavender, grass, and rose. Oh yeah, he definitely smells like lavender. You can mainly smell the lavender, and he smells like the soap in my grandmother's lavatory. So that's nice. That's good. That's a very firm confirmation that that is lavender. Um, then we have Jamie, um, from the Outlander series, or the Cross Stitch series, by Diana Gabelman. And he's so cute, like, look at that, he's so cute. Um, my love for Jamie is so big, it's, uh, I love him so much! Okay, anyway, he smells very nice, very clean, very, although it's supposed to be this strong, overpowering scent, it's, it's kind of... It's very subtle, and I like it a lot, and I'm very sad that pretty much all of the scents I just mentioned are discontinued, which is a bummer. The last one which is discontinued is my favorite. Um, you probably caught me huffing it in a prior, in a previous video, um, but it is uh, Thomas Cresswell by... Not Cresswell. I, I don't... Oh my god, what is his last name? Well, anyway, he is from the Silk and Jack the Ripper series by Carrie Maniscalco, and he smells so lovely. God, this scent makes me so happy. It's, it's so stupid. But he smells like coffee, tobacco, and cologne. It's very overpowering, and I just love it. But I had, a pre I had another bottle of this, but I had to reorder it because dumbass me dropped it in the street and dumbass me forgot to look around and pick it up because I was anxious because it was an internship and kids were uh, entering the schools and it was just it was stressful so I didn't pick it up dumbass me but now I have I have two other bottles so I have three I wish I had four but I'm greedy and materialistic but no um this is a really nice scent and if you've smelled it 
you'll know the obsession, what, what, why I'm so obsessed with it. It's still, yeah, it's not broken. It's not broken. Okay, then we have Audrey, who is also from the Soak Injector, so Injector Ripper series by Kerry Menace Folco. She has rosebuds in her perfume, and Thomas has coffee beans, which is a very nice touch. Uh, Audrey isn't discontinued. She is still available in the shop, and she smells like orchid, earl grey, and scones. Scones? Scones? And she smells like those candy necklaces. It's a very nice calming scent. I, I, it reminds me, it makes me very nostalgic. Then we have the classic duo, which is probably one of my most ultimate OGPs, one true pairings ever. Uh, and it's um, Juliet and Warner from the Chateau series, or previously known as the Touching Juliet series by Tahani Mafi. And, uh, oh, wait, where, Warner, where are you going? And, ooh, okay, so that that's what they look like. Juliet is supposed to smell like paper, dandelion, honeysuckle, and rain. I don't know if it's dandelion or dandelion, but I'm going, gonna go with my gut here and say dandelion. But she smells like very, very nice, very clean scent. And then we have, oop, we have, um, we have Warner here, who smells like gardenia, honeysuckle, and peppermint. And it, it's, they're very similar in scent, but there's still a big difference. I think Warner's more, is heavier, is more overbearing, and it's, it's just a very, very nice scent. Also, however, these do, um... These do, the scent evaporates pretty quickly, disappears pretty pretty quickly, uh, so I would suggest some Vaseline or p petroleum jelly to put onto your wrists, although that doesn't always help. And once, they're, once they've almost entirely evaporated, they leave this kind of fishy, weird smell. I mean, I think it's fishy, I think it smells kind of like fish, but I don't know why, but that's what it does. So that's just a disclaimer that but maybe that's because they are discontinued and maybe older, I don't know. I am a big fan of these scents. Don't let my weird sense of smell put you off from getting these because they are amazing. Okay, then I'm going to go uh, show you what the Read and Wonder Mail, um, Read and Wonder Wonder Mail of May looked like because it was, I don't know if I showed you this already, but it was Shatter Me inspired, so I had to get it. Um, we start off with this beautiful double-sided bookmark. It's that the first side says, I spent my life folded between the pages of books. And the other side says, books are easily destroyed, but the words will live as long as people can remember them. Which is so lovely. I love the writing style of the Shatter Me series. I really, really love it. And we have this beautiful vinyl sticker, which says, hell is empty and all the death hell is empty and all the devils are here which if you have read the books you'll know where it, it that it's actually a tattoo very strategically placed on someone's body uh, on a male person's body very low on the body so <laughs> i can't look at this without laughing i'm sorry it's just ugh. then we have these beautiful 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 uh magnetic bookmarks this is nazira and that's kenji kishimoto and Azira is int isn't introduced until the fourth book, Restore Me, but she's so cute and I love her so much and Kenji is just a precious little angel and <sighs> I love this series so much. Um, then we have this, another, we have another magnetic bookmark which uh, says, who says you can't be cute and kick ass at the same time, which is probably a quote from Kenji because that's what Kenji's like, it's like the big cheerleader of them all. Then we have this beautiful A5 uh, a six actually quote card postcard uh, and it says all I ever wanted was to be touched and touch another human being not just with my hands but with my heart and it's so beautiful and uh, I can't wait to reread them I've already reread them once but I'm gonna reread them for the upcoming novella bind up that's coming out this October and then I'm gonna reread the entire series again before the final book, Imagine Me, comes out next year. And I'm not ready for the series to end, but okay. I'm just hoping that in four years we'll get the announcement that there are going to be three more books. But I don't think that there are going to be three more books. <laughs> okay, then we have this beautiful enamel pin, which says, Woods are such unpredictable creatures, and I love it. It's so, it's so beautiful. 
And then um, they had the end of the financial year sale of E or AO5 sale, uh, also from Read and Wonder. I'm just going to sip my coffee because it's getting way too cold. And I got one of their uh, leftover bookmarks from their January Read and Wonder Mail, or Wonder Mail, which was uh, Strange the Dreamer themed. And this side says, A memory is a leg is a fine legacy to leave behind, which I fully, fully agree with. And then the other side says, What a strange constellation they all were. And then we have this beautiful vinyl sticker, which says, Book Lovers anonymous and it's so cute then we have this uh probably discontinued enamel pin uh which is uh manon from the throne of glass series by sarah J. Maas inspired uh this with the weird marks on the side it's very lovely this says wrong kind of witch and i just love it it's very beautiful and my camera doesn't do it justice then we have these two limited edition or so they say uh grisha Birds, or the shadow and bone trilogy by lee bardugo inspired Enamel pins, this is a set of two. She would rise and like host the like. These are very, very pretty. <sighs> I already filmed most of this video in a prior video, but then I made it 23 minutes long, and seriously, no one is interested in me talking about absolute nonsense for the, that long. Not even I am interested in hearing myself talk that long, so redoing it, that's why there's a little bit of speed. Then, because I passed my first year of college. Or we have a weird school system in the Holland, in, in the Hollands, in the Netherlands, and basically, with the diplomas that I had, uh, I couldn't attend uh, actual university, so I had to do like a little side route, whatever. But I passed that with full marks, full study points, study credits. Yes, sixty out of sixty with a positive binding study advice, loosely translated, for the upcoming four years. Too bad I'm not going to do anything with it, but it's always nice to know that I did my job well. I'm going to, um, I'm going to study at a different at a different university than I had originally planned, but I'm actually pretty much sold on this one now. Um, and it is in Leiden, and I'm going to study English, culture, and language. Um. Yeah, culture and language, which I'm superbly excited about because we get linguistics, grammatica, um, grammatica, grammar, um, philology, etc, etc. So I'm superbly excited about that. And my parents gifted me the Journals of Sylvia Plath, um, edited by Karen V. Kukul, Kukil, Kukul, um, because of that. And it's a lovely gift and I did not really um, anticipate that I got it. It was a big surprise, so I'm very happy with this can't wait to read it um then uh, Sylvia Plath is one of my favorite authors so I would like to know more about her without the biographies other people made I want to read about her from her perspective um then I have some exciting news I've posted it all over my social media already um the two handles that I have I mean Twitter and you know Instagram but I'm not very active on either of those at the moment semi-active but ah, breathe um okay Okay, so, I'm publishing a book this upcoming December. Yes, you heard that right. I am self-publishing a book this upcoming December. And it is called The Secret Society of Playwrights and Grilled Cheeses, or Grilled Cheeses and Playwrights. It's either of the two. I may have put it wrong in the title bar on Goodreads. It was previously titled In Memory of Max. But that was too, I found it too depressing, so I changed it. But it's, um, wow, I'm, I'm too hyper for something that's actually pretty sad. It's a pretty, it's not a sad story, but it's, I want to say coming of age story, but that's not really it. But anyway, it's about, our main character is called Anna but Gill, Anna for short. And Anna had a best friend, keyword had. Um... Had a best friend, Max, and they were very similar to Peas in a Pod, and they shared all of the same interests. They had plans to attend college together, to write this massive, epic ode to all sorts of fandoms out there. It won playwrights, and it was going to be epic. And then Max died. And now Anna has to go on to college, doing all of their plans. 
going through all the majors, minors, courses, roommates, whatever, without Max. So, Anna has a lot of difficulty um, moving on without Max. Um, there are reasons that I can't tell you because it would spoil the story. It would spoil the story. But Anna has certain reasons as to why she can't move on. And um, she is, is dealing with her grief uh, in the worst way. Um, she, she is not doing well. And um, every day at college reminds her that Max isn't there and isn't going to be there um, either. Max is just gone and Max is not coming back. So Anna has a lot of difficulty finding her way, um, continuing. She wants to honor Max by continuing or finishing their playwright, but she can't find it in her to do so because every word, every page, every letter reminds her of Max. Um, but, um, luckily for Anna, she has a very nice roommate, Christina, um, and Christina helps her along with Christine, Christina's friends, Jonathan and Ronald, Ronald, um, helps her see that, uh, helps her move on in a way from Max, uh, helps her learn to deal with how to deal with her grief, and... Anna goes through some changes, and at the end of the book, I'm not going to tell you the end of the book, but I'm still figuring that part out, but yeah, that's pretty much what it's about. It's about friendship and love, and it's basically, it's, it's a growing, it's not a necessarily a coming-of-age story, but it has to deal with new experiences and letting go of the past and getting adjusted to changes you didn't necessarily want in your need or want in your life. And that's basically what the big themes are of the book. Um, I will update, start updating you on my writing process um, because it's just easier sometimes to for me to just whoop, put it out there. I'm sorry. Um, also sorry for the length of this video, but that's basically what my book is about. It is out on Amazon on the 20th of December, which I'm superbly excited about. Can't show you a cover yet because I don't have one yet, but I'm really excited. And um, I also totally forgot about the reading rush, or previously known as the Booktubaton, and I'm going to be an active participant this year because last year I was in England, so I couldn't do, so I couldn't participate sadly. But I remember two years ago I had so much fun, so much fun. So I'm gonna do that. And yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say this video, and it's very boring and it's very long, and I'm sorry, but. Thank you for watching, I suppose, and see you in the next video where I tell you my reading rush um, to be red pile. Okay, thank you for watching. I'm so bad at endings.